What is happening? Welcome to another Pitcher Video Breakdown. My name is Nick Pollock. Today we're going to talk about Domingo Herman because he just threw a perfect game. First month in 2012. It's insane. We did not expect this in the slightest. And how did he get it done? We're going to watch every single pitch. Okay, let's go to it. So, um, there you go. First pitch fastball. You got yourself a strike against Tony Kemp. And there's another fastball that gets another strike, and that's that. Okay, so Domingo Herman throws a lot of curveballs, and that's really everything for him. So, uh, you have that fastball for a strike. That's nice. You're, you're happy to see it. Uh, and there is a curveball getting in for a strike as well. I mean, that's that's really what he's trying to do. Change up a ways. Typically what you'd see now. Curveball down. Tries to do a curveball down. I am going to go quick because I know a lot of you are just trying to watch what happened here. And he gets a curveball that Noda just doesn't know how to handle. And that's really the biggest thing for, for Domingo Herman. Can I get those strikeouts? Can I get those effective strikes with curveballs? Can I not get punished on those? And then can I use my changeup and fastball inside the zone so that I can mix in the curveball effectively, right? Just steal strikes with, with fastballs and, cur and changeups, keep them off balance, but then really just do everything with the curveball. And so there's another fastball that they passively took. It was 99 pitches. He threw a ton of strikes in the zone, and just the, the athletics didn't do it. He tried to throw a backdoor changeup there, which is kind of cool. You normally don't really see that from righty and righty. Uh, there's a curveball for a strike, and that's really nice. A 2-1-2. Two, two, right? Doing your mouth throwing a 2-1 curveball is, is pretty cool. Throw another one. There you go. You get a strike three. Okay? Easy stuff. Welcome to the athletics. No one thinks anything of it. Everyone's so ignorant right now. Like, oh, yeah, it does have a good first inning against the athletics. Okay. So there's a fastball that misses. Probably going to try again or a curveball here. Try again. Misses. So he probably goes back to the curveball 2-0 because that's his best pitch. And he does. He gets a foul ball. You think, oh my gosh, they went so far. Doesn't matter. You got in the zone. This is generally where you don't want to do free real estate because guys can drop the barrel and do that. But because it's the Athletics and it's Perez, you don't even know who that is. That's why. That's a fastball. 92 down the zone. I mean, like, that's not a good pitch. A 2-1, you got to push that to right field for a base hit. I mean, you're looking for a fastball at this point. He's way out in front of this, too. He's trying to wrap it around. Uh, right? Like, gets underneath it, pulls it, and that's got to be... That either should be the center or to, to right field, because that is on the outer half or so. Um, and honestly, if I see that, I'm like, this is easy. Uh, you can throw another one. You can throw a changeup. Like, you can... Yeah, he's trying to throw a curveball there. That was a really bad one. Um, changeup away gets him. Uh, he's wrapping that around. And that that's... You know, we normally see that from left-handers, um, where they roll over pitches away because everything is just dead pull. But, I mean, that's... You got to push that to right field. And so he gave himself an out there. That wasn't a strike. And just two fastballs that weren't good. One was, like, too hittable. One was off the plate at 2-2. And he turns into an out. Like, okay. Uh, bad first first pitch strike. Goes with the changeup. And the changeup working for Herman is a nice thing, too. It's a nice little change of pace. And to be able to get a strike at that at 1-0. Um, especially when Seth Brown is showing that he wants to throw and wants to hit a fastball. Very nice. And you can see, even though it's elevated, Seth Brown selling out 1-0 for a high heater. Doesn't get it, and very deceptive, obviously, because he swings right through that. You see that? You might want to throw another off-speed. And he tries to do it, and it's weird. Like, those are two bad curveballs from Herman. Like, it wasn't complete perfection, even though the result was, right? Uh, there it is. There's a good one. And also a 2-1. Like, this is a little bit of the danger zone. You know, if Seth Brown in any way was expecting a curveball, which he wasn't, uh, he would be able to drop the barrel of the bat and really drive that to right. But then again, he's batting 191 this year. So, I mean, they're metrics too, but those aren't helpful for Seth Brown either. And he finally gets a fastball, and it's a perfect one. A 93 at 2 2. When Seth Brown's been hunting for a fastball the entire time, you need to throw something else that is not a secondary pitch. You know, he nailed it. I mean, that's perfect. That That's really good. First pitch curveball probably coming in here. Oh, changeup. Interesting. He hasn't really thrown like a perfect changeup yet. You know? They've been, sure, they've worked against uh, against Brown. That was, I guess, in the zone. But, like, I want to see one that's like, actually down under the zone that gets a whiff, you know? There it is. There is the perfect one. That should have been the OO pitch. That's really nice. I mean, that's a better one at one which is one you do. You want to get better as you go through that bat. That's good. Now, he doesn't want to swing, so you want to throw a curveball. Yeah. He's waiting for a fast one. Never got it. No. I mean, batters tell you things, guys. If you're not swinging at two change-ups, right? Then that means you're not looking for for something lower velocity. You're waiting for something hard, harder. So don't give it to him and then make him go away from it for a second. He never did. You know? Why are you looking for, also, why are you looking for heat against Herman? Like, I don't know. I mean, maybe you're just trying to get that instead of you, you don't think you can hit the curveball, so you're just waiting for a fastball to drive, but I don't know, man. 
Like he's always curveballs all the time. And that's so this is the thing too, is like this is a 1-0 pitch. And I assume that Diaz is actually looking for a curveball and he's expecting it. Um, and that's why he swings at this in 1 0. Thing is, if you're expecting this curveball in this situation, then you should recognize that this isn't a strike. You know, out of the hand, you should be following. If you're if you're in a position at 1 0 to swing at a curveball out of the zone like this, then you should be following it all the way through. That means you're expecting it. Then you should think, like, oh yeah, that's not a 1 0 pitch that I want to swing at. This is this is what separates good hitters from bad ones. This is what I talk about a lot. Is what makes the athletics the athletics or the tigers the tigers or whatever. It's this. Is it's swinging at pitches you really shouldn't be swinging at because if you do swing at it, it's either a whiff or it's an out. And you just gave him an out on a 1 0 pitch. It should have been ball two. And it's only because of your own mental approach on it, right? It wasn't such a filthy curveball that you just had to swing at it and go for it. Like, no, that's the curveball. You were, if you're swinging at that point and instead of like, oh, it's a fastball, you don't have to protect it. Yeah, it it's, drives me nuts. And I know, trust me, I know how hard it is to hit a baseball. I, I tried for a while. <laughs> but I'm not a major leaguer. And that's the kind of stuff that when they when that separates guys that are actually like good and are in the league for ages uh, from those that aren't. And uh, as someone who's not only has worked with pitchers, I've worked with hitters, believe it or not, uh, also. And it's stuff like that about specifically when I worked with them, it's about the mental approach because I talk about it from a pitcher's perspective to help them understand as a hitter how to give certain body language and how to actually understand sequencing to help them out. And it's that kind of stuff that really can make such a big difference. Uh, and when we talk about plate discipline, it's not about just um, O swing or, or Z swing or, uh, you know, swing at strikes and not at balls. It's about swinging at the right pitches. You know, that's not a pitch that you should be swinging. At. Even if that was like at the end edge of the zone, you shouldn't be swinging that either, right? That's a nice change up there from Herman. Yeah, you thought this would all be pitching analysis, huh? You're wrong. Fastball down away, 93, okay. Throw a chain curveball outside here. Oh, man, that's such a mistake. See, stuff like this, like, that should be crushed. Why? It's a 1-2 pitch. It's a high swing decision. What I mean by high swing decision, being a 1-2 count, uh, Langoliers is going to be super, super protective of the zone. This is one where he's going to stay in. You're going to stay in on this and, and like a curveball coming in, especially being Herman in a 1-2 count. Uh... Like, you, you should be kind of expecting that a curveball could happen, so you have to stay in. And that means that when this pitch comes out of the hand, he's going to be going here and then leaning in like this, right? And you have to be like, okay, be aware that this could be, you know, if it's a fastball, maybe it'll hit me. That's fine. I'll get out of the way late. But, like, I need to stay in if this is a breaking ball. And this is a, this is a hanger. Oh, my gosh. That should just be a lace, at the very least, like a line drive to left field for, like, a base hit, you know? And he skies it. You got to get lucky to have a perfect game, guys. Uh, you know, change up misses for a strike. Fine. Uh, misses again. The curveball. So probably a fastball count. Now let's see what we get. You get a hanging one. Oh. That was close. That actually, I would imagine, is often a base hit. That's a little flare. And he, I mean, how does, how does this a flare? Hold on a second. See, that's a hanging pitch again. Ruiz is expecting a fastball. And so, but props to him for staying in because that's the one that comes back over. He gets jammed enough. Um, and this generally going to the shallow outfield grass is a hit. They had him played correctly. Um, and nine up and nine down. Look at that. Maybe it's a He's one third of the way there. Uh, I, I see that land for a hit a decent amount of the time. Um, so that's that's good to see that it wasn't fastball inside making sure that he stays off the breaking stuff And I throw a 1-0 breaking ball, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's that's how you do it um, No, I don't want to see that stuff. I want to see this. Ooh. Oh Man, so why is this really close? Look where it is. It's 1-0 and you know that that Herman is ma massive on the uh, on the breaking ball, right? And where is it? Oh Actually, I thought I thought this was more inside a little bit more away uh, Kemp tries to wrap the bat around with it, almost gets it. So close. Um, I thought this was a first over here. It was just a quick glance. So actually, this isn't as bad as, as it would be over here. 
Um, and that's, yeah, whew, that was close. Let's see what we get now. Change up, fastball up. Oh. There is one stadium in baseball where that is a home run. It's Yankee Stadium. That pitch had uh, that that I believe had about a sixty percent expected batting average, but only you know Noko. That's 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 it. It's not even. It's, what's really funny is that Herman throws worse pitches than this. That's out of the zone. That's like a really good one-two pitch. It'd be really kind of funny if that was the only hit he allowed because he threw a lot worse pitches here. Uh, but you know, sometimes you gotta get lucky. You have to get lucky to throw a perfect game. I uh, change up missing. He's not doing well with the change up at all, guys. Curveball missing. Like you can see, like this is not. This is not a game of like a dude just completely demolishing a lineup, right? And in some fashions, that helps because it's uh, hitters feel sometimes more relaxed when it's not like the best, you know, they're always down the count. They need ultra focus at, at two strikes or something like that. And, you know, there's, there's this extra element of like, oh man, we're facing the ground. We have to really focus and like make sure that we do the right thing in every single bat. When it's like Domingo Herman like throwing decent but not amazing pitches. Like, the Athletics are a little bit more, they have their guard down a little. Does that make sense? I think it's a stupid thing. Everyone should be always a, like, we're going to demolish, we're going to do this. But, you know, uh, it's just, oh, man. 3-1 three, three, curve. I mean, I get why Noda is is swinging like this because he's really selling out for a fastball. And then he just doesn't hold up, you know. He just kind of keeps going. Um, obviously, you throw another curveball. Yeah. You can't hit the thing. <laughs> Uh, wait, to execute a curveball, three two, pretty hit, pretty hittable one. But you know, now it's now it's moving beautifully. Now he's feeling it. Ah. Hey, all right, good. Wow, Rooker, what is what is that? So Rooker is like really thinking secondary stuff. Um, and I mean, yeah, you would throw, I would throw a curveball. Now you just threw one in the zone, so you throw a curveball. Now even though the Rooker's kind of showing that he doesn't want to hit a fastball, I would still, I would still throw a curveball down away here. Oh, well, there you go, right? Yeah, huh? Uh, so he catches up, to, so it proves that he can do it, right? And then once you prove, you go to something else, and you throw the curveball, that's fouled off. You do it again, just a little bit lower. And a little bit lower. Please. There you go. Away, just not in the zone, yeah. <laughs> that's kind of funny. It's like, that's... <laughs> The book is a pretty obvious one, guys. Like, I'm not I'm not some genius or something for figuring that out. A lot of people are figuring that out. This is just what the book is. You know, you didn't throw these. Uh, stay with me here. This is how you predict an at-bat, everyone, okay? This is pretty easy. First, you throw a first pitch breaking ball for a strike. Great. You try and get him with a fastball, and you miss, okay? So what do you do? You throw the fastball better. Okay, cool. Nice. Rooker was looking for a curveball. So he's actually telling you there that he's thrown that he's looking for a curveball. So you go with a fastball again. Let's see how that goes. Oh, cool. He tells you that he's on the fastball and you can't beat that by you. So now you go with your best pitch. What's your best pitch? You throw a curveball. Let's throw a curveball. One, two. Oh, that's fouled off. Well, that's also because it was over the plate. So throw a better one. That's not an over the plate. Oh, that one's over the plate. So let's throw a better one. That's not over the plate. And there you get him, right? That's it. You don't need to do more than that, especially against the athletics. I mean, it's funny because, like, he's not, he's perfect, but he was so not perfect. <laughs> he needed three pitches to execute one of them, you know? Oh, he gets that call. What Was that a changeup coming back to the zone? Is that what I just missed? Or is that a two-seamer? I think that's, like, a two-seamer at 89? I don't know because we're expecting, like, 93, 94 in the fastball, and changeup comes down to 85 or so. Uh, there's a four-seamer away like that, which is fine. And props to Perez at least going with this one. Because we saw in the previous at-bat that he was rolling over stuff to the, to the left side, and at least he pushed this one. He just got a little bit underneath it. But this is a hittable pitch at 01. You know, a lot of guys flatten that bat at YM lock. That is the middle, like, belt high as opposed to at the knees or um, at the letters. And he gives it a good ride. It just gets a little bit underneath it. And there you go. And, and they positioned him well, especially considering they expected him to pull. The 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 alleys and right center field are not going to be there. The right down the line would have been open, but that's just not where Stanton was because they knew Pyros normally pulls. There's a fastball inside that then opens up down and away with a change of our curve. Change up beautifully done. That's a really nice change up. We didn't really see too many nice ones so far this game. 
That's a really nice one that Seth Brown. He sees really aggressive. You throw it again, right? Nah, he was in on that one. Uh, you throw a changeup or a curveball. Don't throw a fastball. Yeah, curve. Curve is his best pitch. Ooh, man, really? Oh, man, this is a this is a hanger. Oh, good job, Rizzo. This might be, like, the most important one of the game. Because this is, like, this is a clear, um, man. We're watching all of Domingo Herman's perfect game on the YouTube channel. And this at bat might be the one that, like, is... Uh, he got away with a lot, but this one I feel the story of it, everything, is the one that I look back on that should have been different. This is a missed fastball, and then you see a change up, essentially an off-speed pitch for a strike, right? With Herman going at 1-1 to a fastball inside that he misses, he's telegraphing now to Seth Brown that he's going to be throwing a secondary pitch, a slow pitch. Because the fastball just isn't his best offering, and generally that's his curveball. So at 2-1, Seth Brown is looking for a low curveball, and he gets this, which is not a good pitch. And, oh, Rizzo makes the play. And now he's right by the line. Seth Brown drops a barrel well. He doesn't get underneath it, but he gives it a good ride down the line. And a lot of times, I do think that that gets past Rizzo or past the first baseman. 2-1, not a good curveball. He, he got through that, and look. To be perfect, you have to be lucky. Fastball, I mean, that's in there. This is like down the middle, 91. Okay, now you don't throw another fastball, right? You throw a curveball that hangs. That's a hanger. Gets away with that one down the line. You throw a much better one, please. Oh, don't you're not going to spot it with a fastball away. Get out of there. Throw a curveball away. Oh, what are you doing? Bride, what are you doing? That never comes back. He doesn't have a good sinker this way. Like, her mom barely throws sinkers. And this is a batter who's just... I mean, this is a terrible at bat. You, you get a fastball down the middle that you don't swing at, right? He's thinking of something else, fine, but, like, this is all kinds of hittable. Then you get, if you you get a backup curveball that is a hanger, and he doesn't do any damage with it. Uh, so, fine at 0-2. It's a fastball off the plate. And so generally you'd think it would be a curveball next. So you should not be thinking fastball. And this swing is so defensive and so like, oh no, oh no, because he's thinking a curveball instead. And he's thinking, oh no, I, I wasn't thinking fastball. Now he's got me beat. Oh, I, I'm feeling insecure about it, but it's not a strike. And Deming Herman is not known for this. He's not known for backdoor sinkers. Uh, the movement profile of it isn't huge. This is a bad read of the zone. Um... That's not a good, that's a terrible at-bat. There are a lot of these really bad at-bats, as you guys can see. Um, but hey, props to Herman like, throwing strikes. There you go. Like, he keeps getting into strikes. He doesn't really have too many three-ball counts. There was one against Noda, and I think that was it so far. I could be missing one, but he's at least throwing strikes. And the Athletics are making bad decisions and hitting balls in play, but... Nothing that is like a line drive or something. It's not like, oh my gosh, this was a massive, super lucky ball in play, you know? So it could be something to be said about that. Good change up there. I want to Changing it up a bit. Oh man, another backup curve. That just is not taken advantage of. I mean, this is a... The book on Herman is that he throws a ton of curveballs. And you got to be ready for them. And at 1-1, this is like the middle of the plate. This is... Manny Machado takes this out kind of thing, you know? Like... I don't know why I thought of Manny Machado, but on Miss Diaz, you gotta, gotta do better than that. But all right, feels good, right? You throw a good curveball, first pitch, free real estate, zero zero. I like that. I throw a fastball here, because that sets up everything else. If you set the, if you throw the fastball down and away here, oh man, that's a changeup trying to go down and away, and that really creeps in. And he's so far out in front. I mean, he thinks that he's looking fastball inside and doesn't get it. So maybe the fastball away is not the right call, because Langoliers is showing that he wants fastball here. Um. So you can throw a curveball away. You want to go fastball up? He's on that. Yeah, you don't you don't want that. <laughs> throw a curveball away, clearly. Yeah. Uh, I mean that's not, that's a terrible one. I think you got a strike out. Do it for a strike. One, two, super high swing decision. Get that down. You know, that's 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 one that like I've seen so many games this year of Aaron Nola getting destroyed despite like throwing really good pitches and then he throws like one mistake or something and that is it. And then I'm watching this, and I'm just like... 
Like, I'm, I'm watching this and not thinking, like, Herman is doing anything that exceptional. I think a lot of people watching this would say that, you know? Um, the athletics are doing really, are helping him so much. He's throwing a lot of strikes and the curveball. I mean, maybe I'm not giving credit to just the movement and the deception of the curveball, but we know this. It's a really good curveball. Um, but everything else isn't at all exceptional. Like, I haven't really, like, I haven't made a noise. You guys know this. I make noises. I'm not making them. I mean, there's a first pitch curve, but there's whatever there. Okay, bad. That's a bad pitch. Like he says, to Herman's credit, he's not having a lot of those pitches. This is an 0-1 fastball that is just way out of the zone and such an easy like waste, right? We haven't really seen many of those. We've seen some like uh, there's a fastball over here. There's a maybe a pitch over here or something maybe one down, but like for the most part, he's hovering around here. You know, really, it's more of the fastballs I've missed up here, but. To his credit, that is a something you need to do in a perfect game. Like, you cannot just lose a batter. You cannot... You have to make the adjustment in the next pitch, which he does. I mean, that's, again... <sighs> this is so hittable. Especially at 1-1, one, one where he just throws a fastball way out of the zone. What does Herman go to? It's a curveball. And that's just there, and Ruiz just can't stay back for long enough on it. He throws something slow away, yeah. Yeah, that's a filthy one, though. That one had more, uh, like, one was 82 of just kind of get me over, and this one is more of the vicious bite, and you can see Ruiz just needs a better helmet for the second straight pitch. Um, here we are, put through six. He only gets one more strike out the rest of the way, which is interesting. First pitch curveball, that's in the danger zone, and he gets away with it. Uh, okay. What are you doing now, another one? And that's not a bad one at 01. Um, you're probably thinking maybe he could be throwing a fastball on this one. That's for a strike. That's good. That's your best pitch and good stuff. That's the end of the bat. Tony Kemp. Yeah, it's fine. Um, and the Yankees uh, make the play. <laughs> uh, it's interesting because I don't know if there's... A, I'm trying to remember the rest of the way. I mean, that's a hanging changeup. This is like... Noda, please. Oh. So, so... What what do we do against big batters, right? This is Noda. This is the guy that is, like, the most dangerous hitter, I think, right now on the Athletics. You could say it's Estuary Ruiz, maybe. Uh, maybe Rooker. But, like, it's Noda. And generally, against these big guys that are having these breakout seasons, it's because of their, their demolition of fastballs. Here's the seventh inning. You're going deep in this game. What's your best pitch? It's your curveball. You're going to put everything on that curveball now. And so that means it's off-speed stuff. So if you're Noda, like, this is going to be an off-speed pitch. This isn't going to be fastballs. If it's, don't think it's a fastball. And this is a change-up. How are you swinging through this? Oh, you can see him, like, getting out in front and then trying to slow it down for it and get the timing of it. But he just can't do it. Oh, my gosh. I mean, yeah, he's not thinking of the fastball like I was talking about. But you've reversed it. You've reversed it. You're thinking fastball first pitch and then slow second. And then, ah, uh, that is, that is a meatball. That is straight down the middle. I know. It's funny. I'm the biggest fan of pitchers. Trust me. Trust me. It, all I want to do is just give all the praise. I am also someone that's just, I'm a realist. You know, I, I'm not going to just sprinkle nice n niceties. Just for the sake of it, because the results were good. Like, I am so critical. Um, I, I've i seen so much over the years. And I, you know, and it, I'm going to tell you how I see it. That's a beautiful curveball. That is that is a really nice one. This is a big, big pitch for, for Herman. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, best pitch of the, the bat. I'd say top five pitch in the entire evening. Because that's exactly where it should be. Down and away. Uh, notice kind of beat. You don't want to put in a spot where you can kind of uh, hug it down the line. He's aware of the curveball now. He's aware of the fastball. Sorry, he's aware of the changeup, aware of the fastball. You have to throw a good curve. You got to put it in a place that is tempting enough and hard to hit, and that's it. That was exactly perfect. Change up back door. That's so cool. He's doing those backup back door change ups today. Um, that that's a big deal. Like a back door change up isn't really part of Demi Herman's game plan. You really don't see that as a righty to a righty much. You see changeups kind of work out over here. Sometimes they come back over here, but to actually get like called strikes on them down and away is a is a rare tactic. 
And it's because he gets more side movement on that than the sinker, I believe. So he's able to fool guys thinking that's a fastball, and then comes back and, and nails it. Uh, I love it. I think if a lot of right-handed pitchers could do that, they would. It's just not really a skill set that you see. Um, that is another one, which is... Oh, that's a curveball that is... Oh, man. Like, what is he going to throw when he's ahead? He's going to throw a curveball. And you just, you just give it to him. You just, you just roll over it. Rooker's late on this. And I and it sounds weird that he's late, but like this is think of the the trajectory of the bat. Like he's not getting out here. He's he's getting it as he's going down on it, and it's just you got to cheat under, you know that. Uh, mm. That's a very hittable pitch, but hey, you got to get lucky, right? Wait, was that the last one of the inning? Oh yeah, it was. Okay, sorry. All right, we got we got two more innings here. 90 on the dotted, beautiful fastball set up, set up the curveball now. Yep, there it is. I mean, that's a tough at bat. That, that, that's a two great pitches there from Herman. Deserve that out. Yeah. Wait, wait, look at this. Look at the uh, 13 of 22 for first pitch strikes. Normally, when you see like a Maddox happening, which is what this game was 99 pitches and 100, or uh, 99 pitches and a complete game shutout, which is a Maddox technically by one pitch um you see a lot more quick outs on the first pitch and this is almost 50 50 what oh my gosh another hanging changeup. this is insane this is not a good first pitch oh if i'm pitching my heart sinks i'm like screaming out loud like do not hit this please you know that that is not good oh but good on oh yes you know, this might be like my favorite pitch of this entire perfect game from Domingo Herman. And it's not the first one. I actually hate this. This is terrible. This is a hanging 85 mile per hour changeup to Seth Brown, who likely is looking for a secondary pitch at this point because he knows that Domingo Herman just doesn't give in with fastballs, right? It's just curveballs at this point in some changeups. And that, you're like screaming. Oh my gosh. So after that terrible changeup, Domingo Herman throws this. A perfect changeup, down and away at 0-1. And Brown swings at that every single time, and you get your out. That's, those are the kind of pitches I didn't actually see much in this perfect game for Herman. But in the eighth inning, when you're just trying to grind out those final outs, that is so good. That, oh, beautiful. Beautiful pitch from Domingo Herman. Uh, give me the call, Blue. Come on, I'm throwing a perfect game. <laughs> no, see, two. Uh, oh my gosh, you're like, your whole body is just trying to will it. You know, you're you're getting fatigued, even though it's, it's still 88 pitches. It's still two hours in, right? You're you're getting fatigued at this point, and with every single pitch, you're just trying to exert everything you can to throw a good one. And seeing those two is like, oh boy, make a good pitch. Come on. Oh, good job making an adjustment. You missed away. You missed inside. You even the two. Good job. You needed that one. Wait, throw another one. You just got it. Oh, boy. Change up away. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is the second three ball count. What do you throw? Is it a fastball? Oh, my gosh. What is it? Oh, you threw the curveball because he believes in that the most. Yes. And you're going to throw it again right now. There's no way you're not. Yep. Oh, good one. It was a good one. You do it again. Because that's all you got. Yes! Yes! You did it. Oh, man. This was so tense. This was so, is he going to do it? That's so good. That was so... Oh, man. And, and, and the thing is, like, watching this, you know... I just want to sum what it's like watching baseball from the pitcher's eye, pitch by pitch, instead of just as a normal fan. As a normal fan, you're watching this as a perfect game. You're thinking, just throw strikes, just throw strikes. But it's more than that, because Domingo Herman's best pitch is his curveball. And guess what? He doesn't get it for a strike. And then he goes to 1-0. And he doesn't get it for a strike. And you go, wait a second, what else does he have? Like, how, how is he? He's got to get a strike now, right? He's losing faith, and he's tired. He's trying to will this. At 2-0, what does he do? Oh... He throws a good one. Okay. Whew. Take a breather. Right? You threw a good curveball for a strike. Okay. 
Is it going to be another curveball? You can't throw every single pitch as a curveball. We got to throw a fastball or change up or something here at 2 1, right? Something else. And he tries to throw a change up, and oh no, it's 3 1. And do you have the faith? You can't throw a fastball. You haven't thrown a fastball this count, and it's probably your most inconsistent pitch this game. So you're, you're, you're playing with a perfect game, and the thing in your head is like, you can't. You can't throw a fastball and miss right now. It's got to be my best pitch. But I've only got one for three in this at-bat. This is so tense. And if you follow the story of the at-bat, this tension is not just that it's a 3-1 count and you have to throw a strike. It's that it has to be the curveball. So here we are at 3-1. It's got to be a curveball. Oh, and you do it. You get it in. You get it into the zone at 3-1. Okay. But now... It's really obvious at 3-2, you're going to throw a curveball. So do you throw a fastball instead? Do you throw a change? What is this going to be? Oh, my God. Can you throw a curveball for a strike? What are you going to do? Oh, and he fouls it off. This is the beauty of baseball to me. The tension, it is so high. It is the bottom of the eighth inning in a perfect game. Two outs. You've thrown five curveballs in this. Two of them have been strikes. He just fouled off a really good one. The change up, you couldn't throw for a strike. Can you throw a fastball in there? Is that going to be good enough? You got to go with your bread and butter. It's got to be a curveball. Is it going to work? What's going to happen? Oh, and he throws a perfect one, and he gets an out. And I don't even know if he didn't swing at that. That would be a called strike three or not. That was the best pitch that Domingo Herman threw this entire game. The absolute dotted one more time, down and away curveball. This got him to the ninth inning. This got him the perfect game. Amazing, amazing at bat. Whew. And he misses with a change. Now this is the ninth inning. You just, David Cohn talks about going into the the, going into the clubhouse, looking at himself in the mirror, being like, "Do this. You got to do this. You're gonna do this. Absolute nerves killing you. All you want to do is throw a strike with your first pitch, and you throw a change. So you got through the curveball." It's just got it. You're gonna, you're going to get to the finish line with your best pitch, which is a curveball. I won't be shocked if like every single pitch is a curveball. Like, it's all you got. And he goes with a fastball up, and he hits it, and it's just your body is like so tense when you release this pitch, and it's not up. This is a way, somewhat hittable, from Diaz. Somewhat. I mean, it's 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 low enough that you could get on top of it, which he does, but it's a way. And your body, like, just tenses up right now. But fortunately, fortunately, you get Volpe. He's good. Okay. So now, all right, we restart. We throw a curveball. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Leilers. Like, <laughs> like, this is what's going on in your head. It's just, okay. Like, I'm going to go with a curveball. I just hope this works. I hope this works. Because these aren't, like, the best pitches. You're, you're gas. This is just willing it. And first pitch, popping it out like that at the end of the bat, instead of taking that, thank you. Thank you. Because I'll be honest with you, in the ninth inning of a perfect game, especially like with how Domingo Herman pitches, I would likely just be taking everything to two strikes. Just because like the nerves are there, man. It, it, just let him beat himself as opposed to you beating him, you know? So here we are. Don't go first pitch hunting. You do. And there it is. It's a curveball. Of course it is. And he does it. And he does it. And those are two curveballs that you don't want to swing at at all pitches. They're both outside corner. And they both know that, yeah, Herman is going to try and throw a curveball here. And this is actually a hard hit ball. You know? This Ruiz one is like is, is hit hard. But it's the end of the bat. Because, I mean, again, this is outside edge. You want a first pitch curveball there. Same with Langoliers. Look, at, look where this one is. You know? And this is a way, I mean, that's kind of hittable, but it's more hittable than the other one, but still gave him gifts at the end of the bat, at the, at the end of the bat, right? And I think there's pressure on the athletics here to, to get that hit, to be like, we cannot allow us ourselves to be, you know, have a perfect game, but let him beat himself, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, this was also hard hit. I mean, out of the bat, let's watch this one more time. Oh, man. Thank you, Donaldson. Thank you so much for catching that one. Because that's all through the hole sometimes from other guys. And the heat, no. So that that's Domingo Herman all the way through. I hope you watched it all the way through. Uh, you're awesome if you did. Awesome moment for the Yankees. Awesome moment for Herman. Um, I hope he 
treats his spouse well. Uh, and, you know, it's the first one since um, 11 years. If you don't know why I just made that comment, you should probably look it up. But that's all I'll say. Um, you see how he did it. And for those in fantasy purposes, he wasn't good the last two starts. Um, you can see the fastball's not good at all. Uh, the changeup had some good moments. The curveball was just really, really good. He threw a ton of those. The athletics just didn't deal with it. That's really it. And, uh, you know, we're still kind of in this place of, like, Domingo Romano's a really good curveball, and we don't know how the other things are going to work that night. Uh, but, yeah, that's baseball. Phil Humber threw a perfect game. Domingo Herman threw a perfect game. This was not perfection in my way of, like, of, you know, this this often is, like, five innings of three and run ball or something like that. Uh, but that's baseball. You throw enough strikes, you force the other, the opposition to do something with it. And I, uh, you know, he threw good enough pitches at times that he needed to, uh, to make it work. He did not throw a fastball. I mean, he threw maybe two fastballs that were hittable down the zone and that was it. And that's a huge deal when it comes to Herman. So props for that. Being able to f- navigate through this lineup without that fastball in the zone. Um, and also dealing with the fact that the Yankees scored 11 runs and making him think with his own thoughts a ton inside the dugout. But yeah, that is it. So thank you all so much for watching today. Um, obviously, I was going to cover this. Uh, make sure you let me know who you want me to cover in the comments below. But that is it. So my name is Nick Pollock. And may your babs be low and your strikeouts high.